you are tuned to KGVM Bozeman. We are Gallatin Valley Community Radio. We're at 95.9 on your FM dial or kgvm.org online. Happy to have you along tonight. It's time tonight for the Local Musician Spotlight. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Slam, supporting local artists and musicians, Columbo's Pizza and Pasta, Bozeman Brewing, and Silverleaf for their support of our programming. We are out in the Tune Factory tonight with Charlie Parr. Thank you very much for coming in today. We're uh, we're we're kind of um, taking advantage of technology. We're not actually doing this live because uh, Charlie's got a show at the Elm tonight with right. uh, playing with the Little Smokies. So I want to thank you for 
stealing some time out of your schedule to uh, come and do this. It's Happy a, to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think uh, last time I saw you was, I guess, not too long ago out at Pine Creek this summer. Right. That was a, that was a fantastic show. show. That's uh, hanging out there at Pine Creek in the summer is, uh, uh, I don't know how many people around here are familiar with that place, but man, it's a beautiful evening always out there. It's so, gorgeous. Yeah, it's yeah. fun to play out there. It's fun to just be out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so you're still, still putting the miles on doing a lot of touring lately, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm starting to get back into it. You know, it was slow for a while, obviously for everyone. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, this, this, uh, the rest of this year is going to be pretty busy. And, uh, next year the new record comes out, uh, I think at the first part of March and then I'll be busy for the first half of the year. Um, so. Hank, tour in the new album. Yep, exactly. Nice. I was trying to remember. Um, so your latest album was the self-titled one, and that what? When did that come out? The latest record is called "The Last of the Better Days Ahead." Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. that was out. Oh, I think it's uh, we're just coming up on two years since that came out. Nice. And that was the was that the first one you did on Smithsonian Full right. Face? Yep, exactly. Or is that the label for the new one too? Yes. Nice. Yeah, they've been real kind to me. So. Yeah, good deal. Yeah. Um, so how was, uh, how was the time when things were slow, <laughs> the, the time we don't like to mention? Right. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm grateful that, that I didn't lose anybody. My mother came out of it. Okay. You know, my, the family members that I have that are a little bit, you know, more frail, all, all came through fine. Right. I came through fine. You know, I just had, um no money so uh things that i had instead of money like guitars and records had to be sold off but uh you know they're just things so yeah uh i did okay i got to see my kids a lot and that was nice so you know did you uh i would i would i don't really know you know not doing that um what it did you miss being on the road or was it kind of a relief to not have the pressure to be out doing that as much or some of both? Well, yeah, I think, I think, I think it's some of both. I mean, cause the, in 2019, I think I did 282 road shows, Oof. uh, which is pretty much the year, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was exhausted and I didn't even know it, you know? Yeah. 2020 was, uh, kind of on track to be at, as good you know as busy um and i didn't really register that i was exhausted until probably the middle of summer you know um so i think i think it was good for me in a weird way even though it wasn't good yeah uh you know but then again i don't know you know if i if i'd have kept going how much momentum i might have been able to keep up i think it's you know, I don't think it's a, um, I don't think it's an inherently healthy lifestyle. Right. You know, uh, driving a lot, uh, you know, it just it not getting a lot of sleep and not eating as well as I should and not getting right. any exercise. It doesn't sound like <laughs> something you should be doing. But It's probably not going to make any doctor's list of the best things to do. No, to no. <laughs> keep but, going. You know, it's it's. I haven't had a, a day job and going on 22 years now, so I think at this point in my life, I'm unemployable. <laughs> I don't know what else I could be doing. <laughs> uh, when uh, how how did uh, so when when you're touring and stuff, um, how does the, like writing material go? Is that does it kind of have to take a take a back seat until you kind of get a break in touring or do you write while you're on tour or i've found for me personally that that if things uh present themselves you'd better write them down because <laughs> uh, they will move along and you'll not have them anymore so i i carry a notebook i carry several notebooks that just to you know have something in reach pull over write down whatever it is if it's a melody um, I use my cell phone, the little voice memo thing on my cell phone, which is filled with little scraps and fragments of melodies that I don't want to forget. Um, because my, the way I write is I write stories, um, they look like, uh, kind of 
the unfinished stories. You know, they're just fragments of episodes yeah. that I think are good. And then I have a melody in my head, and I'm going through these stories, picking out the lines that make sense with the melody, and yet keep the you know keep the story arc intact. Yeah. And that's the way I write. So you know, as that stuff you know occurs to me, I record it or I write it down. And then if, when I get home and I have time, I go back through all the stuff. And a lot of it is, you know, is is not good. You know, it's just something that occurred to me. And But I, I like to have it so I can go back and look at it and just see if there's anything salvageable in there. Right. You know, because, you know, you, I, you know in, in the best of times, you know, you would, you would, you would create a lot of mediocre garbage for one thing that you're happy with yeah you know so i try to i try to pay attention to all of it yeah there's always there's always the possibility that there's a little diamond in the rough absolutely buried in the middle of some other stuff yeah yeah cool yeah i wonder if you want to maybe play some songs sure thing yeah um see i'll go back a little bit this is i wrote this and 1997, I think. I don't know. Low down, he lived out of Memphis town. Walking them streets, mama up and down. Lord, I had him a place downtown. Women would come from miles around. Say, low down, won't dance for a while. Say, it was his mind, shake his can all the while. Lord, I they called him. Sweetie pie, they called him naughty guy. They called him all the time. He said, I'm never going to see my home. Take a good clue. 
I'll do a folk song. This is a Gambler's Blues or St. James Infirmary Blues or not related to the song about the cowboy in Laredo or the Luck Hospital in Ireland. <laughs> Oh, 
these shoes isn't as easy as you'd like Dodging all these bricks that are breaking all my lights We all have to struggle, we we'll hold it as our truth It's about as special for me as it is for you morning before my alarm could go off I was fuzzy from the beer and I was too tired to get up I tried calling into my boss but she wouldn't answer her phone I can't afford to lose this job so I put some coffee on I pulled on the same clothes that I had on the night before Never saw me anyway, never mattered what I wore I locked the door behind me and I started on my walk Down my gravel street, downtown to my work Sort of thought the uh, <clears throat> the new album. I thought it seemed like it was maybe a little more maybe introspective isn't the right word, but maybe a little more somber sounding than some of the older ones. Uh, Dark. <laughs> well, maybe a little. Uh, do you think that was a, a product of the times or just well, what you were? F- yes and no. Sorry. It's hard to do both at the same time. <laughs> um, yes, it was. It's 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 another kind of those. It's all of the above kind of situations. Um, you know, I. Uh, struggled with a, a lot of different kinds of, you know, well, not a lot of different kinds, but I've, had, you know, my own uh, journey with mental health issues. Uh, and and um, and I think, you know, when I wrote this record, it was, uh, I was pretty much by myself, you know, um, in precarious living conditions and, you know, uncertain future and broke, you know. Yeah. And, and, um, a lot of that came out in the in the things. It's it's not really it's not really an autobiographical record, but the the feeling or the atmosphere is very autobiographical. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's not specifically about me, but my mood permeated the record pretty hard. Um, yeah. Um, and some of the some of the songs on the record, I I, I don't even play them now. Yeah, uh, um, just because it, it, it's a little bit too much, you know, it's too right on the nose some days. <laughs> yeah. The next, the new record, on the other hand, um, is is pretty upbeat, and yeah. and the themes are are much more removed from myself and my personal issues. Uh, so I think it's it's a much um, it's a much easier listen. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I, I was trying to think about that, like trying to even understand what I thought was that much different because like the first album of years that I got was When the Devil Goes Blind. I just wandered into the record store and saw it sitting there and just thought I would take a chance on it and apparently that was some extremely good serendipity but uh, um, you know there were certainly some songs on there that were you know some of the subjects matter was kind of not super happy and everything <laughs> right. but just, just the feeling was a little bit different and just trying to think about like what what the difference was and and uh there's definitely something different but yeah well and I, I i really value you know trying trying as best as i can to be honest about what i'm doing even if i'm making up stories about fictional 
characters, you know, if I if I if I don't really understand um, how they might feel or react or whatever, it doesn't feel like a very good story to me. Yeah, you know, because I'm not invested in it. Right. right. Um, and I'm. You know, unfortunately, for better or for worse, I I have a, a a certain amount of melancholy that just kind of surrounds me, and that's what I'm like. You know, <laughs> and I feel like if I were to um, deny that, write songs that I think people want to hear because I want to make them happy, I think that would be um, disingenuous. Right. And I think people, you know, people are smart and they can tell. You know, yeah. uh, and I think you know the the, few, the 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 people that have have come to be fans of my music. I you know they 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 know, yeah. and I don't want to you know I don't want to put on a put on a I don't want to you know put on a, kind of a fake show for people. Right. You know, even if it is, I don't even think it'd be that happy. I think it would be even sadder <laughs> in some different in yeah in some kind of capacity to come it's like the sad clown thing they got the yeah. makeup on with the painted smile but you can tell they're not that happy right. about it so right yeah and i th- you know for me personally i think one of the things that really attracts me to your music is i like you know story songs and uh i think you said that it's like if you were if you were writing it trying to write it from like a different perspective that you didn't understand the stories probably wouldn't develop right and and people would notice that you know it wouldn't think so. it wouldn't convey the story i don't think yeah no i i think that's exactly right i mean i you know i listen to a lot of music i i music is my primary thing that i love and i listen to a lot of it and um you know every once in a while you you kind of come across something that just doesn't hit right and you feel like they're they're kind of bluffing yeah you know and and i you know, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into that situation where I'm trying to bluff my way through something that I don't know. Right. You know. Right. I I had a I had a I had a uh, hockey jersey once, uh, and it had a big D on it, and I assumed it stood for Duluth because I don't know much about hockey. And to my horror, uh, I've you know I learned the hard way that it does not stand for Duluth. It stands for Detroit. <laughs> and uh, I you know I, I, I well. I, I, yeah, you know, I gave the shirt to the guy who knew the the team. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm you know I'm, I'm not I'm not a fan. I'm not a, I don't follow sports. It felt suddenly I felt like an imposter of some kind. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. That's probably not a great analogy, but P- putting on airs a little bit of a little some bit, kind. Of, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> nice. If you're just tuning in, this is KGV and Bozeman. This is the local musician spotlight. We're in the Tune Factory with Charlie Parr and. Uh, I want to thank Pat Loken for making the Tune Factory available and for doing the video and the audio and the setup and uh, all the work, really, so I can come in here and listen to Charlie and chat. It's uh, it's an excellent gig for me, and I uh, appreciate Pat for doing that. And uh, I want to thank you again, Charlie, for coming in. Oh, it's a huge pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, if you want to play some more. Sure thing. Uh, here's here's this, um, this is also off the last record. This is uh, dedicated... Um, to the late great Robert Johnson, who uh, literally changed my life when I was about 13 years old and first heard one of his records at the public library and um, haven't been the same since. So this is called On Listening to Robert Johnson. No! 
shadow in three dimensions Like you could crawl right inside of me And I heard music down the avenue Long and cut right through the traffic sound All at the same time And I hurried To follow it down I stopped I stopped outside of a gray house Near the alley That I had found my way To the sound Now I can hear I can hear the music clearly right down on the wet wet ground and I was taken to meet the devil well and I trembled in the pouring rain I took a ride in a fast car with a woman named Betty May. I woke up to the blues, they were walking. Barroom clown, I was stumbling, stones all in my pants. I carried my baby suitcase to the waiting train. The blue fell down just like rain, just like rain, oh, just like rain. Um, yeah, I play an old blues. This is a uh, um, either Lane Harden or J.D. Short, they both recorded it. Uh, it's called Hard Time Blue. Crown about hard time and they come. 
fact this morning I had worked ten years ago sure be nice if some of those old blues songs about the hard times didn't keep coming back around and being relevant again just re- always relevant <laughs> yeah yeah they absolutely are and that that's a song i i for it's a compilation oh it was a it was in the soundtrack of a film about joe buzzard the record collector from new england and i just fell in love with the song um and later heard jd short's version of it or lane harden's version of it first and the sentiment I mean, not just the words, but the whole atmosphere of the song. Yeah. I, I can't do it justice, obviously, but it's, uh, you know, it's a song that's been on my mind for a long, long time. Like a lot of those kind of hard time songs, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I'll play my own hard time song. This is uh, my uh, uh, apocalyptic uh, murder ballad, I guess.
know the lows. Put your pack upon your back. It's a year of Jubilee. Are you ready? Are you ready for the year of Jubilee? Are you ready? Are you ready for what is bound to be? Are you ready to be united with your mother and your son? Are you ready? Are you ready? It's called Jubilee. on stealing a sailboat <laughs> damn it ed <laughs> uh, let's see.
that gasoline ain't free Well, his clutch is wearing out my knee called 1922 I wrote that for my dad Thank you. 
Thanks again for coming in, and uh, looking forward to seeing you at the Elm tonight. Thanks. Be yeah, awesome. Me too. And uh, hope the road treats you well on well, the rest of your tour. And appreciate that. <laughs> looking forward Always. to that. Album next spring, right? Yeah, uh, March, I think. Nice. Yeah, it'll be called Little Sun. Cool. So. All right. Yeah, You've been tuned to the KGVM Local Musician Spotlight, and uh, we're here in the Tune Factory with Charlie Parr. <laughs> 